the hereditary Grand Ducal couple of Luxembourg open an exhibition in Luxembourg City. Princess Charlene of Monaco visits a retirement home in France. Queen Margrethe II of Denmark attends a dress rehearsal for an upcoming ballet performance in Copenhagen. And the Swedish Royal Court makes an announcement regarding the Crown Princess couple of Sweden. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Friday, November 24th, 2023. In Stockholm, the Swedish Royal Court announced that their Royal Highnesses, Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden, will attend the Royal Variety Performance at the Royal Albert Hall on Thursday, November 30th, along with their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales. The Crown Princess couple of Sweden, accompanied by the Swedish Minister for Defence, Mr. Paul Jönsson, and the Swedish Minister for Infrastructure and Housing, Mr. Andreas Carlsson, will begin their three-day official visit to the United Kingdom on Wednesday, November 29th. The purpose of the visit is to strengthen relations between the Kingdom of Sweden and the United Kingdom. Moreover, to highlight, quote, enhance cooperation in the areas of security and defense, the green transition, innovation and research, and increased exchanges within the business sector, all included in the recently signed Swedish Business Strategic Partnership, end quote. In Oslo, the Norwegian Royal Court announced the birthday plans for His Highness Prince Sver Magnus of Norway. The prince, who is the son of their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Håkon and Crown Princess Mette of Norway, will turn 18 years old on December 3rd, 2023. Their Majesties, King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway, will host an official luncheon at the Royal Palace on Friday, December 1st, 2023. Guests in attendance include Their Majesties, the King and the Queen, their Royal Highnesses, the Crown Prince Couple of Norway, Her Royal Highness, Princess Ingrid Alexandra of Norway, Her Highness, Princess Marta Louise of Norway, and Her Highness, Princess Astrid, Mrs. Ferner. In addition to the family, quote, representatives from official Norway, youth organizations and sponsors, end quote, will also be in attendance. On Thursday, his Royal Highness, Crown Prince Håkon of Norway, held an audience with the Vice President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, Boti Answan, at the Royal Palace. On Wednesday evening in Oslo, the Crown Prince couple of Norway attended a reception in honor of the Norwegian athletes who participated in the 2023 Special Olympic World Games in Berlin, Germany. The reception was hosted by the Norwegian Minister of Culture and Equality, Ms. Lumina Jaffrey, on behalf of the Norwegian government. According to the Norwegian Royal Court, the Crown Prince couple spent time talking with the athletes where they, quote, learned about their experiences in Germany. Norway was represented in handball, gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, bowling, riding, athletics, judo, swimming, golf, and badminton. The Norwegian athletes made an impressive effort in Germany and came home with a total of 51 medals, 16 gold, 22 silver, and 13 bronze medals, end quote. Well done. On Wednesday, Her Highness, Princess Marta Louise of Norway, along with their Hest business partner and creative designer, received the 2023 L Business of the Year Award during the El Gala Award Ceremony in Oslo. In Copenhagen, the Danish Royal Court announced the Christmas holiday plans for the members of the Danish Royal Family. Her Majesty, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, will arrive at Marsilisborg Slot in Aarhus on December 20th, 2023. The Crown Prince family, along with their Royal Highnesses, Prince Joachim and Princess Marie of Denmark, his Excellency, Count Felix of Montpizat, His Excellency, Count Henrik of Montpizat, and Her Excellency, Countess Athena of Montpizat, will arrive at Marsiliusborg Slot on Christmas Eve. According to the Danish Royal Court, quote, in connection with the Queen's stay in Aarhus, there will be a changing of the guard at the Royal Life Guard at Marsiliusborg Slot every day at 12 p.m., end quote.
This morning, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark made a surprise visit to the Danish women's handball team training session in Brøndby. The team is preparing for the upcoming 2023 Handball World Championships, which will begin on Wednesday, November 29th in Herning. On Thursday, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark attended a dress rehearsal for the upcoming re-premiere of Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen, held at the Tivoli Concert Hall. The Queen, once again, designed the costumes and the sets for the ballet performance with choreography by Tivoli's director of the ballet, Mr. Peter Bo Ben Dixon. The Snow Queen will re-premiere on November 30th, 2023. On Wednesday, in Copenhagen, the Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, held a meeting with the Ambassador for Climate Change of Denmark, Mr. Thomas Anker Christensen, at Frederick VIII Slot at Amelienborg. During the meeting, Ambassador Christensen informed the Crown Prince couple of the status of Denmark's climate efforts ahead of the upcoming United Nations Climate Summit, also known as COP28, in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. The Crown Prince, along with the Prime Minister of Denmark, Ms. Meta Frederiksen, and the Danish Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Lars Rasmussen, will attend the summit, which will begin on November 30th through December 12th, 2023. On Thursday, Her Serene Highness, Princess Charlene of Monaco, along with representatives from the Chien de Coeur de Monaco Association, visited the residence Cap Fleurie in France. According to a press release, throughout the year, the Chien de Coeur Association organizes visits and events for residents at Cap Fleurie, Residence La Cutidine, Residence Belando de Castro, Centre René Trois, and Centre Hospitalier Princess Grace. Quote, Our mission is to share love and moments of happiness with the elderly in Monaco. Our therapy dogs are trained to provide affection and comfort to people in hospitals, care homes, schools, hospices, people with learning difficulties, and in everyday life. End quote. Meanwhile, on the island of Corsica, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, and Her Serene Highness, Princess Stephanie of Monaco, presided over the inauguration of the exhibition entitled René Trois de Monaco, Sur le pas de saint -Tivote held at the Musée Mariana Ponce René Trois de Monaco. The exhibition, held on the occasion of the year-long centenary celebrations of the birth of Prince René III, showcases the deep historical ties between the Principality of Monaco and the island of Corsica. René Trois de Monaco, sur la pas de saint -Tivote, will be open to the public until September 22, 2024. On Wednesday, her Royal Highness, Princess Caroline of Hanover, with her grandson, Her Serene Highness, Princess Charlene of Monaco, His Serene Highness, Hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco, Her Serene Highness, Princess Gabriella of Monaco, and the Commissioner General of the Department of Education, Youth and Sport, Ms. Isabel Bonal, visited the park Princess Antoinette in La Condamine. The purpose of the visit was to celebrate and participate in various activities on the occasion of the 2023 International Children's Rights Day, also known as World Children's Day. The fun-filled day, organized by the Mairie de Monaco, featured a variety of activities, including face painting, a treasure hunt, and even a drone demonstration. Back in Monacoville, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, presided over the 2023 Grand Médaille Albert I Award Ceremony held at the Musée Océanographique de Monaco. The annual awards organized by l'Institut Océanographique de Monaco honors individuals from the, quote, world of the sea for their scientific discoveries and their commitment. The winners, both French and foreign, are now distinguished in two categories. The science section highlights a highly qualified researcher in the field of oceanography for a lifetime achievement specific work, or outstanding discovery. Created in 2014, the mediation section values the actions carried out by women and men in public life. 
75 laureates have already received the Grand Médaille Albert I, including Jacques Yves Cousteau in 1981 and Leonardo DiCaprio in 2015. In the evening, the Sovereign Prince couple, accompanied by Mr. Louis Ducollet and his lovely wife, Mrs. Marie Ducollet, Miss Camille Gottlieb, the Minister of the State of the Principality of Monaco, Mr. Pierre Datou, and the Deputy Chairman of the Monte Carlo Société de Bain de Mer, Mr. Saban Valéry, attended the official re-inauguration of the Café de Paris Monte Carlo Barcerie. According to a press release, the new Café de Paris Monte Carlo is finally being revealed on the Place du Casino after undergoing an extensive 19-month metamorphosis at a cost of 70 million euros. This is the sixth time the legendary Brasserie, originally known as Le Café d'Yvon, has undergone renovations since the establishment first opened its doors in 1868. On Saturday, Her Serene Highness, Princess Stephanie of Monaco, as patron of the luxury lifestyle charity, and her daughter, Miss Pauline Ducolet, attended the ninth edition of the Club Viva Nova Luxury Lifestyle Charity Gala Dinner held at the Fairmont Monte Carlo. This morning, His Majesty, King Felipe VI of Spain, presided over the inauguration of the exhibition entitled Jorge Juan, El Legado de un Marino Científico, held at the Museo Naval de Madrid. Organized by the Museo Naval, the exhibition is, quote, dedicated to covering the main milestones in the life of the sailor and his outstanding contributions to the history of science in the 18th century. A total of 120 works from the collections of the Museo Naval and the national and international institutions, including the Biblioteca Nacional de España and the El Museo del Prado, end quote. Meanwhile, Her Majesty Queen Letizia of Spain, as Honorary President, presided over the closing of the 26th edition of the Seminario Internacional de Lengua y Periodismo, held at the Monasterio de Yuso. According to the Spanish Royal Court, the two-day seminar gathered journalists, disseminators, scientists, linguists, and environmental specialists to discuss how language is used by the, quote, different agents involved in the response to climate change and how it can play a crucial role, end quote. On Thursday, Their Majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain presided over a meeting with a delegate commission of the Fundación Princesa de Girona at Palacio de la Zarzuela. On Thursday, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg at the Palais Grand Ducal. The newly appointed ambassadors are from the Republic of Costa Rica, the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, the Republic of Tunisia, and the Republic of Chad. On Wednesday, the Royal Highnesses, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume and Hereditary Grand Duchess Stephanie of Luxembourg attended the opening of the fourth edition of the Biennale de Man de Maître, held at the 19th Avenue de la Liberté. Held under the theme, The Gesture and the Territory, the three-day event showcases contemporary art and craftsmanship from 77 artists from Luxembourg and 40 from Portugal. Established in 2016 at the initiative of the Hereditary Grand Ducal Couple, the aim of the event is to, quote, highlight the talent pool of the country in terms of creativity, as well as to shed light on the beauty and importance of the transfer of know-how to younger generations, end quote. On Thursday, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians met with students from two primary schools who were learning about the diverse flora and fauna in the gardens at Chateau de Lacan. In the afternoon, the king participated in a roundtable meeting 
with the Council of Presidents of the Business Europe at Chateau de Lacan. During the meeting, discussions focused on the, quote, European companies' economic perspectives, opportunities and challenges in the current climate, and the geopolitical situation, end quote. This morning, RVD announced that Her Majesty, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, has adopted three cute little hedgehogs who are now living in the beautiful gardens at Palais House Tembosch in Den Haag. Apparently, in the Netherlands, hedgehogs are having a harder time due to, quote, hot summer months, the worms are deeper in the ground, and there are fewer crawling insects. In recent years, more and more sick, weakened, or injured hedgehogs are coming into hedgehog shelters. The hedgehog's habitat has also become smaller due to construction and increasing traffic. The garden and forest area at the Palais offers enough food and space for the hedgehogs through the many diverse plants and shrubs." End quote. Meanwhile, their majesties, King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, hosted a reception for Dutch members of the European Parliament at the Palais House Tembosch in Den Haag. RVD notes that during the reception, discussions focused on climate change and the, quote, feasibility of a climate-neutral Europe, expansion of the European Union, European elections, the possibilities for the European Union to cooperate in the field of health, and the digital transition, end quote. In Bangkok, Their Majesties, King Rama X, and Queen Sothera of Thailand presided over the presentation of swords and diplomas to graduates of four military academies, including the Royal Thai Naval Academy and the Royal Thai Air Force Academy, during a ceremony at Dusit Palace. Their Royal Highnesses, Hereditary Prince Philip and Hereditary Princess Danica of Serbia, released two new family portraits with their newborn daughter, Her Royal Highness, Princess Maria of Serbia, and their son, His Royal Highness, Prince Stefan of Serbia, on Thursday. The little princess was born on Sunday, November 5th, 2023, in Belgrade, Serbia. In Windsor, His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Saeed Ayazan Ben Haytham Al Saeed of Oman, held a meeting with His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, at Windsor Castle. During the meeting, discussions focused on friendly relations and economic cooperation between the Sultanate of Amman and the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales, visited Sebi's Corner in Barnet. Established in 2021, Sebi's Corner, quote, provides items to families in need across Barnet, Hertfordshire, and London, end quote. And finally, in London, Her Majesty Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom hosted a reception at Clarence House for the Booker Prize Foundation. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Saturday, November 25th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful Friday afternoon and a great weekend. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful Friday afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.